Hey everybody, this is Tracy here with another edition of A View from Tracy's Point. And I am here with an update to the Sanaya Dennis case. And you guys know the other day I posted a video about her disappearance. She is the daughter of former Dipset um, rapper by the name of 40 Cal, whose birth name is Calvin Bird. And his daughter went missing on April 24th and the family and volunteers were you know in an extensive search for her because they felt that the police wasn't doing enough and all the police would say was that they were looking for her but they didn't think that anything criminal had happened to her and so today more information has come out about this case that is leading authorities to believe that Sanaya has taken her life. Um, although there is no body that has been recovered, they say that they will continue to work the case until they find her body. Um, they probably believe that she may have jumped um, off of a bridge. I'm hoping that the body will surface. Um, this is just so heartbreaking. And you guys know about a month ago, there was a similar situation with a college student out of I can't believe if she I can't remember if she attended Louisiana it was somewhere in Louisiana she attended school but in any event she was missing her car was found on a bridge um, after another vehicle struck it and you know after days of searching for her they um, found her body in the water where a Godiva dog um, had picked up her scent but anyway, here is a article from WIVB Channel 4 in Buffalo, New York, and it says Thursday morning, Erie County District Attorney John Flynn provided an update on the disappearance of Buffalo State College student Sanaya Dennis. Dennis, 19, was last seen leaving her dorm on April 24th. In the middle of that day, Flynn says Dennis had been in an argument with her boyfriend that ended with him breaking up with her. Dennis continued to attempt to contact him and said she was going to take her life. Her boyfriend was in New York City the entire time and is not considered a suspect in the disappearance. Later that day, in another conversation with a male friend in New York City, she said she was planning to take her life according to Flynn. That evening, Dennis and her friends stayed on the phone together for about four hours. In that conversation, she had said she was reconsidering what she said earlier in the day and was feeling better and that she, than she was earlier in the day. About an hour after that phone conversation ended, Dennis threw personal items into a garbage can. Flynn did not say what those items were, but said they would make someone believe she wasn't planning to return to her dorm. This was around 11 p.m. Shortly after throwing those personal items away, her bus card was swiped at a nearby bus. On the first bus, Flynn states that Dennis was alone, but she eventually got onto another bus and got off at a stop near the Niagara Falls Visitor Center around midnight. Dennis texted her mother telling her she loves her and that she'll call her the next day. She also texted her friend saying she wouldn't see him this summer. The last time Dennis was seen on video was around 12.17 a.m. She was seen on park cameras on the bridge along Goat Island Road. As she was there, she received a text from a friend telling her to call him or else he'll call police. He then called her and they spoke for about 45 minutes. In that conversation, Dennis said she was going to jump off a bridge. Yo, excuse me. Around 1 a.m., Dennis took a Snapchat selfie near the Nikola Tesla monument. Niagara Falls was in the background. 
After 20 minutes, about 20 minutes after this, she texted a male friend and said that she spoke with her mom and was on her way back to Buffalo, but that was not true according to cell phone records. Minutes after that, her cell phone left the cellular network, meaning it was either powered off or destroyed. Also, according to Flynn, um, the male friend didn't initially report this to anyone, Sanaya's family was unable to contact her Sunday and notify Buffalo State on Monday, which is when the investigation began. Buffalo State contacted NYS Park Police after determining she may have been on Go Island. Law enforcement has been searching for her multiple times each day since. Every business around the park area has been asked for footage. Officials have not gotten any information from any of the requests that they put out. And I believe I mentioned in the first video that I did that the family has stated that the business owners were not really being helpful. Either they didn't have surveillance camera or they said that the cameras weren't working. And then on Friday, April 30th, a K-19 deployed to Goat Island after picking up Sanaya's scent from clothes in her dorm room. The dogs tracked the scent to the area of Luna Island, where the DA says the dogs went over a railing into a grassy area near the water and wanted to jump into the water. Searches have continued each day since, and Flynn says they will continue until she is found. The FBI interviewed her ex-boyfriend, and NYPD interviewed her male friend. Flynn said it is presumed that Sanaya took her own life, but I can't definitively say that at all. All I can do is present you with what I have. And so that was from April 30th. And then we know something, they must have found some more information over the next couple of days, which have led them to conclude that she did in fact jump into the water. And they are saying that they don't think that they are going to be able to retrieve the body. Probably, I don't know how deep the water is or the flow of the water if it goes into a bigger area of water. Multiple agencies have been involved in the search for Dennis and the search will continue until she's found. But Flynn says her body may not be able to be recovered. And so in a statement that was released, um, it says yesterday afternoon, members of my office met with the family of Sanaya Dennis to provide an update on the investigation into her disappearance. At this time, we believe that Sanaya traveled alone from the Buffalo State College campus by NFTA bus to Niagara Falls State Park where the evidence suggests that she took her own life during the early morning hours of Sunday, April 25th, 2021. While the Erie County District Attorney's Office does not typically become involved in missing person cases unless there is evidence of criminality, we assisted in this multi-agency effort to find Sanaya at the request of SUNY Buffalo State College University Police. My office and our partners in law enforcement have found no evidence of any criminality in this case. All evidence indicates that Sanaya ended her own life, but the investigation into her di disappearance will not be closed until she is found. My thoughts and prayers remain with Sanaya's family and friends during this difficult time. Thank you to all who have assisted in the search to find Sanaya, I commend SUNY Buffalo State College, Buffalo State College University Police, New York State Park Police, Niagara Frontier Transit Authority Police, New York State Police, Mayor Byron Brown, Buffalo Police Department, Niagara County, Sheriff's Office, Niagara Regional Police, New York Police Department, the FBI, and other law enforcement agencies who have dedicated their time and resources to this ongoing investigation. I also want to thank the Buffalo State community members of the media and residents from Western New York and beyond who have participated in the search and shared information about the case. And that was from John Flynn, the Erie County District Attorney. And so guys, definitely not the ending i'm sure her family wanted and it's even worse and compounded by the fact that they don't have a body to give them 
which always make you leave, have that little bit of hope that maybe she threw the phone into the water and then left anyway. But obviously there's no video footage or anything to indicate that she left that bridge, like walked away or anything. And they may have footage of her jumping, not sure. Um, you know, they're not sharing that information, but I'm sure they shared it with the family. And so this is really heartbreaking. You know, and I'm a mother of, whew, of three daughters. And so I, I can't even begin to imagine, you know, what their daughter was experiencing, what the breakup with this boyfriend meant. I'm sure that the friend that she was talking to is devastated that he didn't contact her parents when she first made the threat or that, you know, he didn't try to, you know, call the suicide hotline or that he didn't do more to help her, like reach out to the police or something. This is something that is probably going to torment him for the rest of his life. But, you know, it's just a reminder, you know, that we think that our kids, you know, have it going on and that they're okay. I remember when my daughter was in college at Grambling, you know, which is like 1400 miles away and getting a call from her tennis coach, you know, telling me that she was sitting on the side of the road crying, you know, not answering to people. And it's like, what do you do? How do you get to your child? And, you know, he was asking me to call her. I was calling her. She wouldn't answer the phone. So I know that these kids go through some stuff when they're away from home, especially if they live a very sheltered life where, you know, I know with my daughter, I was always a constant in her life. And so taking her to college and dropping her off, I know was a devastating moment in her life. And so we just have to be in communication with our kids, be in touch with our kids and, you know, talk to them. If something doesn't sound right, you know, continue to ask questions. They may get annoyed, you know, but just keep asking the questions. I mean, my daughter's 28 now and I can tell when her and her boyfriend are having problems and you know it's like what can you do because relationships end and unfortunately she didn't understand at the age of 19 that that probably wasn't going to be the only relationship that she'd ever have and definitely nobody is worth you taking your life like 19 years old how much in love can you really be or how much do you really know about love about life about you know what you're going to be doing three years from now 10 years from now and so just a tragic 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 situation tragic you know ending to this story and prayers out to the mother Letitia Dennis prayers out to the father any siblings and family members that are left to mourn her passing and just you know talk to your kids this evening and let them know that you know tomorrow is always another day for happiness you know you might not be feeling that right now you might feel like whatever you're going through is so monumental that you can't take another step you can't take another breath but just know that tomorrow is always a new day for better, for happiness, you know, to reach your goals and don't put anybody before yourself. Like no man, no woman is more important to you and that you shouldn't love another person so much that you love them more than you love yourself. And anytime you find yourself loving another person more than you love yourself or feeling like you can't live without that person, that's the time to seek help. That's the time to talk to somebody. That's the time to reach out, you know, and reflect over your life and ask yourself, why is this person, you know, so important that I feel like I can't move on without them? So just want to bring you guys this update. Go ahead, leave your comments below, rate the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And until the next time, I shall talk to you guys later. Bye bye.